not uh, this this is just that in in that particular study it was not made available and for e antigen negative group of patients for the same group of drugs we can see that the dna loss on treatment is quite impressive with the interferon group and that's also partly because they always start off at a lower baseline viral load level they achieve a decent normal alt level histological improvement can be obtained and when treatment is stopped there is often a recurrence of viral replication and increase of the alt so it is not a durable treatment not for short term treatment and likewise for the nucleoside analog while being treated generally they achieve good dna loss they achieve good suppression of the alt back to normal levels cause histological improvement but if treatment were to be stopped then there will be no durability as well in other words in the e antigen negative group generally we expect quite long term possibly indefinite treatment if we were to use nucleoside analogs so in summary for interferon and pegylated interferon the advantage is that it can be viewed as a finite treatment that is a finite course either half a year or one year and hps antigen can be achieved but we must be realistic at the end of the day is only in 3 to 8% the disadvantage is that it comes with considerable adverse effects both physically on the marrow and sometimes psychologically it is an expensive treatment and the percentage of a durable response is not very good in terms of nucleoside analogs there are so many types of nucleoside analogs around their distinguishing characteristics uh uh its potency its resistance profile and the side effect profile for example some analogs suppress viruses much better than others uh some analogs are more durable in the sense that the virus do not develop resistance against it and the side effect uh of different kind of nucleoside analogs are different so i've just briefly in a general way sort of listed them according to their strength of potency and the strength of resistance profile this is tenofovir and tecovir telbivudine lamivudine and adafovir in terms of side effect adafovir can be associated with nephrotoxicity especially when used long term and tenofovir has a theoretical a uh, risk of potential nephrotoxicity as well although its use in clinical practice has not been long enough to see a a, a clinical clinically significant issue in this area so in summary uh, the aim of treatment of chronic hepatitis b viral infection is to suppress the virus so that we can retard progression and reduce the risk of hcc and the indication is when there is ongoing inflammation in the setting of ongoing viral replication and the options are many for us to choose from uh, and but it has to be tailored to each patient's profile and that's when uh, uh, what we do each day when we meet our patients and make these decisions thank you very much all right let us thank all the speakers And please feel free to come forward if you have any, if you have any burning questions. Perhaps I would just make a very quick comment because in my practice we see things the other way around. We see patients being diagnosed with HIV infections and then we run the whole panels and then they are hepatitis B positive. So I, I would like to just mention that perhaps in your practice if you see anyone hepatitis B positive do remember to test the HIV because treatment There's some difference, and there's the medications that we use can cross cross resistance to the HIV medic um, HIV management. So, any other comments, questions, feedback? If not, I think I really truly enjoy this afternoon's sessions. Let's uh, thank all our speakers again, and you for staying all the way back to now. Thank you. <laughs>